Dennis Chang here. Welcome to another video. Um, this is a video that I shot two weeks ago because by the time that you watch this, I should be in Nashville, USA playing this kind of music. Yes, today I want to talk some more about my trip to France. And you may have noticed the clickbait title, Why DC Music School is Useless or something like that. Well, it's not useless. I mean, it's the best that I can do, but you have to keep in mind, and it's something that I've always been aware that there are limitations to technology. And that is the fact of um, the idea of being there in person. The thing is, when you record, even with the best technology, it doesn't capture that um, that feeling when you're there in person um it's it, it's it's a really magical feeling even and i was there with my friend christian van hamer to me you saw in the beginning of this video he's someone who who's more how do you say um more scientific so to speak he doesn't tend to believe in all these super i don't know if it's super i don't want to use that word supernatural but i don't know i don't know how to describe it even he said it's it's one thing to see these players on YouTube or even a concert with my on stage, but it's another thing to be there in front of them to hear this, to feel this aura. And that's something I want to talk about in this video. And again, I'm using a microphone, I'm using a really good microphone, but I can't capture that thing. So as far as gypsy jazz is concerned, one thing that's very, very incredible, the, the, the one thing that you notice right away in the east of France with the players there is the power they have when they play and it's not that they're playing like brutes they're not playing loud like in a in a aggressive way but it's so controlled um, I'm gonna try to play a little bit I don't know what it's, what it's gonna sound like but it's the difference between playing like this textbook correct technique but when you're there they have this power they have this very very positive contact with the strings and it's not about playing like a brute because some people do do that and it's not very pleasant I'll try to do my best it's nothing like that it's super powerful but it's very very controlled and it's something that you can you can experience firsthand when you're there in person well, what can I say about that? Uh, it's about having no fear when you play and being one with your instrument. <laughs> like you, you really get to know your instrument. You, you know how, what sound you want to get out of it and then you go for it. So in this case, on this particular, this wonderful Martin Tremblay guitar, I, for example, would pick a little bit behind the hole and I, on my downstrokes and on my upstrokes, I make sure that every note has this staccato sound. Ta, 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 ta. As opposed to just playing regular down. Using the weight of your wrist. So that's one thing. And then the next thing is the confidence with which they play. It's just so rhythmically precise and so powerful um, and where does that come from that comes from these guys coming from this area of France where there's nothing to do but play video games or play guitar <laughs> and these guys grew up with each other and grew up with their uncles who were all insanely amazing good musicians and they would play 10 hours a day 12 hours a day I'd go over to my friend's house like Benji's house and then Hono would just show up, Brady would show up, so and so would show up, and they would just play like for hours and hours. I remember like six or seven, eight years ago, I went to Dorado Schmidt's house, and then there Amati was jamming with jamming with Brady all afternoon and just trying things out. So it's a lot of work, but these guys have fun doing it, and I hope you guys have fun playing music, and you consider some of these little things. Um, we released the Brady Winterstein lessons last week. 
and my my video guy Zach, when he was editing it editing the video he would take frequent breaks because he'd get so inspired he's going he was going through gypsy jazz puberty he'd be watching the videos and he'd feel so excited that he'd have to run to his room and grab his guitar and just start trying out those ideas that's how exciting this east of france style really is and it's the same for me like i when i was there watching recording them i was looking at christian we're just in such disbelief mm, maybe not disbelief but just in awe and we just want to try these ideas out. and i remember after um christian and i parted ways he was christian was asking me please can you send me uh this performance that performance from this 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 i want to check out those licks i want to check out that's that's this effect this motivating thing and that's what i try to do also with dc music school is to have all these performances where hopefully you watch them enough times and you get excited and you want to try ideas out so there we go that's what i want to talk about so with that said maybe what we can do we can watch a few videos from the upcoming video lessons with punch and favino the the bratty lessons are already available so please check them out oh and please leave a comment like subscribe it makes a huge difference and uh, if you're a gypsy jazz beginner you may also want to consider buying my beginner gypsy jazz courses on sound slice you'll find the links in the description box <laughs>so this thing with the rhythm when they play rhythm it's not that it's loud but it's powerful while being quiet um, I, again i don't know what how this is going to sound but like gotta unleash the fury hey i'm back because as i was editing this video to release it on the day that you're watching this i got kind of uh motivated i started watching those uh brady videos and the punch videos and favino videos again and i started practicing <laughs> that's that's the effect the motivating effect and i came up with my own phrases and i want to show you two phrases over this common chord progression let's say i can give them the love c c sharp diminish g e7 so you you encounter this in a lot of songs like uh jangles tiger i can't give you anything but love um even all of me which is in the key of c where it goes f f minor some people do f sharp diminished and if you're not too bothered by it even if it's f minor you can still think f sharp diminished in your soloing this is a concept that I explain in my harmony course that's available on SoundSlice. It's something that I call harmonic direction. It's less about the individual chords and more about the direction in which uh, the harmony is going. Um, of course, not everyone agrees with this principle, but the fact of the matter is a lot of jazz musicians do apply this, uh, this concept where they ignore the actual chord and they superimpose it with another chord anyway yeah you encounter this in quite a lot of songs and the phrase that i came up with uh two of them that i'm going to share with you uh goes like this in the key of g so it starts on c one two three four
And if I played it a little bit faster, I would change things a little bit for the right hand and the left hand just so to make it easier when it goes fast. I would play it like this. So it's over here. Instead of doing down, I do. And just because I'm nice, I'm going to have this transcribed for you on Sound Slice. So check the link somewhere in the comments or description box. Okay. And here's another phrase. One, two, three, four, one. So these are cool phrases that you can use that outline the changes in a kind of simple way. Just playing C, C sharp diminished G to E7. Um, expand your vocabulary and it's gonna develop your technique as well. So there we go. Like and subscribe. Um, what else can I say? I just found out that actually on the day that you're gonna be watching this video, yesterday is the third anniversary of my YouTube channel. I'm actually I've had this YouTube channel for many, many years, but I was I wasn't really posting anything serious until three years ago as of yesterday. And um, that was right before the pandemic started. And nowadays, this online thing is my only source of income. So thank you so much to all of you who've been watching my videos, who have been supporting me by buying stuff on DC Music School or on SoundSlice or buying music on Bandcamp. It makes a huge, huge difference. Everything's kind of upside down for me in terms of how my, my where my sources of income were coming from. I'm a little bit of a late bloomer in a lot of things. Like this whole social media thing, late to YouTube, late to Instagram. So I started using YouTube three years ago. Started monetizing things as soon as it was possible three years ago. Um, started using Instagram three years ago as well. And um, this whole social media thing is kind of weird. You know, the whole thing about having subscribers. To be honest, I don't care about any of that. But because now this is my only source of income, it means a lot to me that a lot of you guys are subscribing, following, commenting because it's what allows me to make these videos for you. Believe it or not, you know, I don't really care about this social media thing, the followers thing. What matters most to me is just learning, practicing, progressing, and then being able to share it with those who want to who want to hear what I have to say. So again, thank you, thank you so much. And also just found out, uh, well not just found out, I just realized that around this time it's also the 11th anniversary of DC Music School. And the fact that I'm able to make a living from music is all thanks to people who are willing to support me and support the people who I work with. So thank you, thank you so much and um, there we go.